Hi everyone, Marcus Cohn again. In this second video of the Synology Solutions Seminars playlist, we, the main theme will be the backup and redundancy of data using Synology products. But first, let's actually talk about a very common usage of Synology NAS devices that many organizations are implementing. Building your own private cloud. When you are building private cloud storage for a client, there are a couple challenges that you will face. You need to have easy remote access so your data is accessible from anywhere. Having consistent data between these multiple devices is essential as we use different devices for editing files. Coupled with data sync, you need to have your mobile access so you can access your data from any device. And last, data security is always needed as you need to feel secure that your data is secure. While there will always be these challenges in building a private cloud storage, Synology solves all of the challenges with some amazing software features which I will cover in detail. The first main challenge and a core feature of a private cloud solution is having the ability to remotely access your data, and this is where Synology's Quick Connect service comes in. This is an entirely free service that allows you to register a unique ID with your NAS that is considerably easier to remember than a public IP address. The way this works is that you make a request to your NAS, and at that point, it creates a VPN tunnel between yourself and the NAS, thus giving you a secure connection. Quick Connect does not require any complicated network management and is capable of enabling SSL for even further security. If you want easy remote access to your NAS, I highly recommend you check this out, as it is even very useful for people who are more IT savvy. Now that you have easy remote access with Quick Connect, you need to have the ability to sync your data between devices. That is where the CloudStation suite comes into play. Once you install CloudStation Server on your NAS, CloudStation Drive on your computer, and DS Cloud on your mobile device, you can enable a bi-directional sync between all of your devices. This software is cross-platform and supports Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as mobile devices. I'm going to dive into a demo here and show you how this software works. In this CloudStation demo, we're going to be discussing CloudStation Drive as well as CloudStation Server and how to sync up files between your devices. So as you can see here, I have CloudStation Drive open. Now this is the application that you install on your desktop. As you can see, we currently have one sync task set up with the name demo, and it is syncing the files within the user's SAC desktop cloud station folder. Now this folder was auto created by the application on the desktop and that is actually this folder right here. So as you can see there are three files here and they all have this little green check mark next to them. That indicates that these files have been synced up to the remote unit. So what if you wanted to add another file to this? Well we're going to minimize this and we have this file here and we're going to go ahead and drag this into the cloud station folder. As you can see the icon has changed it is the little circle and within a couple seconds, you will see that change to a green check mark, indicating that the file has been synced up to the unit. As you can see, went from a blue revolving circle to the green check mark, indicating the file has been fully uploaded and is now accessible on your NAS. So CloudStation Drive is a very useful program and very easy to install. Um, creating the tasks is very easy, and you can get a lot of very robust information, whether that's the logging or the full download history. You can view this all directly on your desktop. You also have CloudStation Server on your NAS, and as you can see, I have now opened up DSM. And as you can see, we have the different settings here. We have the overall overview, the full client list, as well as the logs directly in this as well. So it's very easy to understand and very easy to use. And last but not least, as you can see, if you go to the file station and to the demo folder, which is the synced up folder, all of the files have then been put into that folder and will be reflected across every device you have connected with CloudStation. As we come out of the demo, I want to highlight some of the features that CloudStation offers. We have full file versioning with up to 32 versions that allows for that point in time restoration. You can selectively sync only the files that you want based on file type, size, or folders. If you do not have internet access while you're editing the synced files, the files will sync once the network becomes available. And you are also able to edit permissions on a group or IP address level, thus making it easier to manage as the IT admin. We currently have 13 mobile apps that allow you to access various aspects of your NAS. 
They will all have the same functionality as the web interface and provide the ability to access your data and NAS wherever you are. These are available for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, and I highly recommend you check them out. Now that you are syncing your data between multiple devices, you need the ability to back it up. We have three different packages that we will be highlighting that perform very different functions. We have Hyper Backup, the more traditional version backup that we are used to, High Availability, which provides local redundancy of data and hardware, and Snapshot Replication, which allows for on-device versioning and remote redundancy of data. We're going to start off with Hyper Backup. This package allows you to back up your NAS to a USB drive, another NAS, an R-Sync server, or a cloud provider. You can have block level incremental backup that leverages cross-version deduplication. We also have some very useful customizable settings ranging from encryption to bandwidth control to backup compression to smart recycling. Hyper Backup is the core NAS backup utility that we offer, and I highly recommend you check it out if you have not already. We're going to move into a demo here to show you how it works. In this demo, we will be highlighting Hyper Backup, but mostly in the sense of how to create a Hyper Backup task, as well as highlighting the many different backup destinations you can have. To create a Hyper Backup task, all you need to do is click this plus button here in the bottom left and click Data Backup Task. As you can see, there are many different backup destinations you can enable, whether that's a local shared folder, a remote rsync server, Amazon Drive, Google Drive, local data copy, the list goes on and on. But for the sake of demo, we're going to go ahead and click local shared folder. And go ahead and click next. And from there, you specify the backup destination. We already have a backup shared folder created. And we're going to set up the directory to be that. Go ahead and click next. And this is the files and folders you want to be backing up. So what we're going to do is we're going to back up the documents folder to the backup folder. We go ahead and click next from there. If you want to specify any specific application backups, we don't want to do that here. We're going to go ahead and click next anyways. And this is where you can get to the settings. So if you want to set up a backup schedule, run integrity checks, or even set up the various compression and all that side of things, you do this all directly through this backup wizard. We're going to leave it as is just for the sake of demo. Click next. And this is where you'll enable the backup rotation if you want to utilize that feature as well. We're going to enable the backup rotation and enable smart recycling so it will handle it on its own. And we'll go ahead and click apply. This task has now been created and we'll go ahead and choose to pick backup now. It will now initiate that backup task and start the full backup of that documents folder. So as you can see, creating a hyper backup task is actually very easy. And with that, the backup has completed and you are fully backed up with that folder. We're going to jump back into the presentation here and move on to a couple different cool packages. So we discussed and demoed the traditional backup utility of Hyper Backup, and now we're going to talk about the local redundancy with high availability. This package allows two Synology NAS devices to work in an active passive relationship with a real time sync. This allows for automatic failover with minimum downtime. This failover can protect against many different things, ranging from crash storage to a service error to a power interruption. As you can see here up on the screen, the active server is no longer getting a connection from the virtual IP address and it will fail over and the passive server will become the active. All Synology pa packages work in this high availability configuration and it is fully virtualization ready. I'm actually going to jump into a demo once again and show you exactly how high availability works. All right, so we're going to move into the high availability demo here. And as you can see, I am currently logged into DSM and have opened up the high availability manager. Now, all the settings you want to manage for your high availability will all be done directly through this. This button itself right here is this manage button. And this is where you can do all the very granular and very particular management of your HA cluster, whether that's enabling a switchover, rebooting specific servers, or completely unbinding them all together is all done directly through this interface. You're also able to change the network settings, you're able to monitor those services, as well as get an overall idea over the storage status, disk status, and even get granular logs. So I could talk about what HA does all day, but I want to show you actually how it works. So we're going to go back into the overview here. And as you can see, the cluster is currently healthy. How about we change that? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the command prompt, and we're going to ping the units 
IP address. So we're going to go ping dash t to make sure it is constant. 192.168.1.10. And again, this is the virtual IP sent to both units. Go ahead and press enter. And as you can see, we are getting a constant reply from the units. Now what I'm actually going to do is unplug the active unit. I have now unplugged the active unit and as you can see, there's a bit of a pause. You'll see a request timeout, but in my experience, you'll see usually an under a 15 second failover time. So in a couple seconds here, you will see the reply start to happen again. As you can see, it is attempting to restart and within a couple seconds, you will see that the reply will come back and the, it will, everything will be back up and running. So as you can see, everything is back up and running. That was roughly a 15 second fail over time, but in terms of multiple days or multiple hours, 15 seconds really is not too bad. So now that you're using high availability and achieving local redundancy of your data and your hardware, what if you want remote redundancy of your data? That is where snapshot replication comes into play. We like to think of this as split into two separate sections, snapshot and replication. Snapshots allow for the point in time data status while the replication is replicating those snapshots to a remote NAS. We're going to start and talk about the snapshot section. As many of us already know, human errors are far more common than hardware errors. And because of this, fast versioning and self-service recovery is extremely important. Snapshots are fully integrated with Windows Explorer, so your end users can easily restore files themselves. You're able to take an instant shared folder level snapshot that fully remembers the data status. You're also able to schedule snapshots to happen up to every five minutes. And coupled with that, you need a flexible retention policy to, to make sure that you're only saving the snapshots that you want to save. Snapshotting is available either on files or the iSCSI LUN level. And we're actually going to jump into another demo here and show you how it works. So in this snapshots demo, we're going to be discussing how to take a snapshot, how to schedule snapshots, and how to restore files from either the DSM or through Windows. We're going to first show you how to take a snapshot. So as you can see here, I have DSM opened up and I have the snapshot replication package opened up as well. From here, you have the overview, snapshots, replication, recovery, and the logs. As you can see in the overview, there's no scheduled replication set up, but we're going to be mostly focusing on the snapshots section. So as you can see here, these are the four shared folders I have currently on this unit. And in order to take a manual snapshot, all you need to do is select the shared folder, click snapshot, and take a snapshot. In this case, we're just going to call the description demo, and we click OK. Within a couple seconds, the snapshot has been taken, and you now have seven restore points available for this shared folder. But what if you don't want to take the snapshots manually every time, you want to take them on a schedule? What you need to do is click on the shared folder you want to schedule the snapshots on and click settings. From there you can enable the snapshot schedule. You can select the specific days, the specific frequency, and as well as what time this snapshot should start at. You can also change the retention policy so you can either have a set number, you can either always retain or set up a certain policy so you can only retain the snapshots you want. It's very easy to do and very easy to set up. So we've showed you how to take a manual snapshot and how to schedule snapshots, but what about how to recover files? Well, there's a couple different options. You can either recover through snapshot replication, you can recover through file station, and you can recover through Windows. Let's just show quick on how to recover through snapshot replication. What you do is you click on this recovery, you click on the, the recovery you have and click recover. And from there you can see all of the snapshots that have been taken for this shared folder. If you want to recover from a certain point, you can click on that snapshot and click browse and you can view the contents of that snapshot itself. You can easily do that through snapshot replication. But what if you wanted to restore only a specific file? Well, it's actually a lot easier to do through file station. So we're going to go ahead and open that up, select the snapshotted shared folder, in this case the documents folder. And you want to restore, let's say, this file. You go ahead, you right click it, and you go down to view history. This will then show all of the snapshots that have been taken with this file in it. From there, you can select the earliest one, which was early this morning, and click view. And there you can view the earliest version that was taken of this file. 
It's very easy to do and you can do it on a file level or a full folder level. So we also wanted to highlight how to do this through Windows. So let's go ahead and open up the mapped drive of the documents folder. So as you can see, I have mapped the documents folder to this desktop. And if I wanted to restore a file, let's say a change was made to this file that I do not like, you can actually do this directly through Windows. So you right click on the file itself and go restore previous versions. As you can see, there are a couple different versions that I've taken today, as well as earlier one earlier this year. So you can easily either restore to one that was taken today or go back a couple months and make sure that you have this core version of that file. So as you can see, we are fully integrated with Windows and it's actually very easy to do. We're going to move out of the demo here, go back into the presentation and highlight the replication side of snapshot replication. As we come out of the snapshot demo, we're going to discuss the replication side of this package. You are able to sync the snapshot to a remote site up to every five minutes and the remote site has the exact data as the primary site. This allows for the remote redundancy of data that you're looking for. We also offer failover through the replication side of this package. This is an instant rapid service recovery in the event of a disaster. Let's say your primary site catches on fire. The unit will fail over and the recovery site will become your primary site. This allows you to bring your data and LUNs back up and running within minutes. Once you have the initial primary site back up and running, you're able to re-protect and switch back over to the original setup. Thus, making the original setup back to the way it's supposed to be. So while all of this functionality is built into the Snapshot Replication Package, most IT admins do not want to rely on something they have not tested. You are actually able to test the failover capabilities which clones a writable copy of your data for testing on the recovery site. If you have not tested Snapshot Replication, I highly recommend you do so, especially if you are relying on it for that remote redundancy of your data. There are a couple different relationships these servers can have when replicating snapshots. We have the active-active relationship, where each server is being used as primary data locally and recovery data remotely. We have extended replication, where you have a snapshot taken in Taipei, which is being replicated to Shanghai and replicated again to New York, so you get extreme redundancy of your data, even geographically. We offer hub and spoke, where multiple branches will replicate their snapshots to a headquarter unit, or one-to-many, where a headquarter unit will replicate their snapshots to multiple disaster recovery sites. Synology NAS devices offer multiple tiers of data protection. We have the instant snapshot and recovery with snapshot replication, the file syncing with CloudStation, the traditional backup and restoration of hyperbackup, as well as fully built cloud archival capabilities. So we always like to highlight a real-world case study if possible, and we'll be discussing here Jetstar Pacific Airlines. Jetstar is using CloudStation backup to backup their Windows computers to a primary server, a local network backup to a secondary server, and a remote network backup to a disaster recovery site, all using Hyper Backup. A very cool use case where they are using all Synology software to get extreme redundancy of their data. And this brings us to the end of the second video of the Synology Solutions Seminars YouTube playlist. We covered backup and redundancy and the various packages Synology offers to give you redundancy of your data, either locally or remotely. Thank you for listening. Please sit tight as the third video will start shortly.